Richard Koken from London. Come on over, Richard. And uh, he heads up, well, he's the senior, come, come in the middle here, mate. Yeah, he's the senior pastor of Dundonald Church, but also heads up the Co Mission Network, which has how many churches, Richard? <laughs> There's about uh, 30 churches, 22 established. Eight of them are getting established. Mm. Yeah. And some of them are Anglican and some of them are non Anglican. Indeed, that's right. And so you've kind of got a foot in both, in and out of the Anglican Church. I suppose so. I mean, Dundonald Church is on the edge of the Church of England. We're an impaired communion with our bishop, but we do care about the Anglican communion and we're delighted to be here. Mm. What's your impression been of um, uh, things during this week? Um, exciting, humbling, sad. Um, it's wonderful to see the Word of God is central to everything that we're doing. It's wonderful, the note of repentance, that uh, we're all sinners. We all need to turn to God from our sin. Um, but also great sadness to see that the instruments of unity in the communion uh, are broken and that the communion will need to be reset. And that is a sadness as an Englishman to watch um, the historic origins of the church, the Anglican church, uh, having failed. Mm. And uh, it's sad, but it needs to be reset uh, because we must, Article 20, we must be loyal to the word of God and it is not lawful to ordain anything contrary to the word of God. And tragically, the House of Bishops is proposing to do just that. And uh, it's a great joy to be here with brothers and sisters from all over the world. Uh, it is Christ who has brought us together. He is celebrated amongst us. It is a great joy mm. uh, where you feel in a minority in England and on the margins of the Church of England to find that you have brothers and sisters all over the world who celebrate uh, in very different ways, from very different cultures, but the same Lord Jesus Christ in the same word. And uh, there's been a tremendous note of repentance. Mm. Every day we're, we're ourselves turning back to God first. Before we call out others, we must repent of our own sexual immorality. But um, to get to the issue, we have got to love same-sex attractive people better than to tell lies. Mm. And uh, we care about them. They're mm. in our families, they're in our churches, they're in our country. Uh, we want them to discover the life-giving truth of the Word of God. Mm. And we need the communion to support us in mm. doing that. You know, when you said it was a sad moment, I, my heart went down. Yeah. But I believe there is something joyous as well coming to Gafcon this time around. Yes. What joy does it bring to you? It is a joy to be surrounded by people uh, whether from many from Africa, of course, but also from all over the world, from Asia and Australasia, South America, who, who, who read the Bible, the same Bible we do, and read the same passages we do. It is encouraging to feel that uh, we're supported and prayed for and loved by people from very different backgrounds, but who love the same Lord Jesus we do. So it's a sadness, but it needs to happen for the sake of the mission of the church in the UK. Uh, the same word that proclaims life and proclaims the Lord Jesus Christ requires repentance and faith from us all. We're all sexual sinners. We're all sinners in many ways. But to be saved, we must repent. And we must love people enough to tell them that truth and practice it ourselves and encourage others to repent of their sin. So, um, yes, it's, a, it's a grievous. But um, I think the Archbishop of Canterbury himself recognised in Accra, I believe, that the instruments are broken. And uh, it's a momentous time to recognize that uh, uh, his role uh, has now changed. Well, and over as far as the communion, I, the seems, communion seems to be saying, yes, his leadership is over and there is a resetting of the communion. That is sad, and yet it is joyful, as you rightly said, that we will go forward now um, with clarity. That is, that it is the word of God that governs us. It is the word of God we proclaim that brings life uh, and the best kind of life, the flourishing of humanity. The Word of God is good for us um, because our Saviour speaks it. <laughs> he loves us. And uh, it's a great joy to be encouraged in that. And where we have been weak in the UK, to find the strength of the Africans and the Australasians and Asians encouraging us, but with great grace and there's a, there's a tremendous sort of uh, uh, love uh, from people across the, the cultures, which, of course, only Jesus can bring. Uh, and he has been the center uh, right from the beginning of this conference. Christ is all. He is all that we need. Um, and his approval, in the end, is all that we care about. We, we will be hated for this. 
Um, but Christ's approval is what we live for. Mm. And the example of others, of course, where hatred brings persecution at a level that we know nothing of, just humbles us. And, uh, yeah. um, what I've noticed, and I'll be interested in your reflection here, is uh, in the lead up to this conference, I, as I was talking to different delegates from around the world, I, I was hearing clarity from many delegates um, from different nations being really quite clear about um, the issues of a call to repentance, a call to rebuke to the Church of England and a call to rebuke to the Archbishop of Canterbury. And yet I was getting a much more muffled response from within the English delegation. Um, and so to, to hear you speak with the same clarity, uh, uh, have, have you noticed a shift in the feel in the English room over the last few days? It is true that um, I'm surprised that in the English delegation, uh, bishops and clergy alike, there is no question that the Archbishop's role, I'm afraid, is over, that the instruments, that there has been a tear. And there, there is no doubt about it, there's no debating that anymore, it's now clear. But I would say that in our culture um, and in our country, uh, we, we are very concerned to ensure that the provision of pastoral care is deep and real Be because in our country same-sex attraction um, is celebrated. Um, our young people are very confused on the issue under immense pressure in their schools. Teachers and uh, healthcare workers face uh, discrimination if they mention uh, the Christian worldview and the Christian view of sexuality. Um, and it is very important that in our condemnation of sin that we keep and, and demonstrate real love and care for sinners who want to turn from their sin and are finding it hard. Mm. And we must not be harsh in our condemnation of sin towards those who are trying to turn from sin. Mm. There needs to be a compassion and a care in our churches. Um, and, I, and I think that's appropriate because in our culture, this is an issue where people are struggling. You know, our, our families are struggling, our, our churches are struggling, and harsh conduct, you know, clarity is good. Mm -hmm. The word of God is clear on this issue, but also that we must love one another and show compassion towards the outsider and for the sinner who, who is uh, wanting help to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, there are those in my church who, who have left their partners to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have told me that they are relieved by the stance that we are taking. They want our support in following Jesus. But let us make sure that we love them well mm. and love those who are, who are struggling to depart from their sin, uh, that we will welcome and encourage and look after and love them well in our family and not discriminate against them within our, mm. our family. And there's a lot, a lot of talk in the UK. One of the reasons why uh, same-sex attraction has gained such support is the argument that the Christian worldview is damaging and uh, causing mental illness and suicide and so on. I mean, it's terrible the things that are being said of Christianity. We need to demonstrate that Christian churches love and nurture and care for those who are turning from their sin to follow Jesus. And that's a challenge to us that, that across the communion. And that may not be so obvious in, church, in countries where same-sex attraction is culturally abhorred. But in the countries, Western nations, where um, the culture has turned to embrace and celebrate same-sex attraction, uh, harsh condemnation alone is not enough. Mm. We must be loving and kind and supportive to those who are same-sex attracted in our churches and among us who, who are following Jesus. Mm. Richard Koken, thanks so much for coming to talk to us. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Richard Koken, uh, the Senior Minister of Dundonald Church in the UK, and he heads the Co-Mission Network in the United Kingdom.